Welcome back to the high score tutorial. Where we left it after the last session, you were able to, you had a high score table with names and numbers in it. You were able to encode it to the cloud so we could store the data in the cloud. In this session, we're going to be able to read it back out of the cloud and you will have a fully working high score system. So we had encode high scores, encode name, encode score. We're going to need similar custom blocks to read the data, but will be decode. So we'll have a decode high scores, run without refresh, and a decode name without refresh, and a decode score, run without screen refresh. So there's going to be parallels between the encoding and the decoding. I'm going to copy this across and see how much of it we reuse. Actually, looking back at the encoding, after we've finished encoding, what we should do is actually write it to the cloud. So set the cloud high score variable to cloud data. See, we've got it all ready to write. Might as well write it. And here, Decoding, we're going to set cloud data and we're going to read it this time. So we're going to set cloud data to whatever is in the cloud. And we're still going to set high score to one. We're going to repeat however times we need to repeat. But instead of encoding, we're going to decode name and decode score for each entry. The other thing we need to do is when we we'll, we'll have to set up a variable called decoded name for this sprite only and a, for this sprite only variable called decoded score. Now decode name function will actually decode it into the variable decoded name and similar for score. So after we've decoded, we'll do a replace. Replace item high score index of high score names with decoding name. And similarly, I'll just duplicate that, get rid of that. Replace high score index of high scores with decoded score. One other thing to check, the player may not have access to cloud variables. And so we'll, we're going to add a variable here called connected. So it's quite important for this sprite only. And we're going to say if, now when we've read the cloud data, if we're not on the internet or if we don't have access to cloud data because we're a new scratcher, that will just return one. So if cloud data, I mean zero, so if it equals zero, I can set connected to false. And if it doesn't equal zero, I can set connected to true and start reading the data. Now this is important because imagine you've got an internet connection, it wasn't connected, you were unable to read the high scores, we just use your default high scores, but then it connected. You don't want to write your new high scores when you haven't read the old ones, otherwise you'll be just writing in lower scores probably. So in here we can say only encode it to the high scores if the last time we read the high scores it was successful. So if connected is true, we can update the cloud variable, but if we weren't able to successfully read, we certainly don't want to write. So that's a useful check to go in there. So that's going to loop through, read all the names, read all the scores. We also want an index variable setting up, which I'll use index for. 
start on the first letter of, or the first number of whatever is in cloud data. Cloud data contains all of the names and all of the scores, don't forget. So decoding a name, we know we've got 12 characters encoded for a username. Some of them may be 00, zero which means there's no character there because the name was shorter than 12 characters, but the maximum will be 12. So we're going to repeat 12 times and we're going to set the character number. It's going to be each character is encoded by two numbers, don't forget. So we are going to join letter index, which I'm using to go through cloud data of cloud data and letter, the next letter, which is letter index plus one. Of cloud data. So that gets, that gets the two numbers. Now we want to see what character that refers to. Now we've already got the list of all characters and so we can simply set the character to the relevant index, to the relevant member of the list which is the index character number Of all characters, so if it's zero, 1, it will index item 1 of all characters. If it's 22, it will index item 22 of all characters. It's doing the opposite of encoding name. Encoding name is getting the number of, getting the position in the list, and this is getting the item from the list. So we've got the character, and we're using decoded username here as the variable to store the decoded username in. So we'll set decoded username up. Decoded name up as nothing. When we've got a character, we'll build, build up the variable by joining the new character to it. So join decoded name is joining whatever's in decoded name with a new character. Then we move index on two places because we've read two numbers out of the string. So we'll change it by two. Simple as that. The only other thing we do, if the character number was zero, zero, then there is no character there. It, was an, it just meant the username wasn't 12 letters long. So we won't want to add that to the decoding name. So if the character number is zero, zero, or just, just zero really, now if it's greater than zero, we want to ignore if it is zero, we want to do this if it's anything other than zero. So if character number is greater than zero, then find out what character it was, add it to the decoded name, and move on. Decoding the score is even easier. It's five numbers from the cloud data, and we know these are all numbers. They don't need decoding from a list. We're just reading five numbers. I'm going to copy this across anyway, and we're going to set decoded number to nothing. We're going to repeat five times, and all we're going to do is set that's not high school, decoded number, decoded score. Set decoded score to join whatever was in decoded score and the, the current number out of the cloud data and then move on to the next one. It's not decoding two numbers at a time, it's just reading a number, so just the next character. And that should be all that's needed to decode the score. So we're decoding name, decoding score. The final thing is to initialize the cloud data. We'll only need to do this once. And what I'm going to do over here, 
Down here we have the code that sets up the high score name and scores list. So I'm going to duplicate that over here. I'm not going to give it a function name, but th all this does is populate those lists. Now, as we've said, usernames can't actually have the space in them, and they're a maximum of 12 letters. So instead of scratch player, which is more than 12 letters in length and has a space, we just call it scratch cat, which is nine letters long, 10 letters long, and no spaces. And when we've done that, we're going to write out the code. Now remember it's checking for connected equals true. I know I'm connected, so just while I'm setting up the original cloud data, I'm going to say connected is true. And then I'm going to encode the high scores. So at the moment, the cloud data just contains zero. So after I've encoded everything, if I look at the cloud data, you can see it's now, it's now contains a lot of numbers. That is all of the high scores encoded into the cloud data. I shouldn't need to run that again, but I'll leave that code there in case I ever need to reset the high scores again. Don't, after the game's been out there for four weeks and it's populated by high scores, don't accidentally run that code or you will just remove them all. So we're getting the username. We've set up the default high scores. At that point, we're going to decode that. We're going to read the data in the cloud. If we're successful, we're going to overwrite those with whatever's in the cloud data. If we're not connected, it will just use the defaults. So that's reading the data. In here, I'm going to set, actually before I, yeah, in update high scores, if the score is in the high score table, then it's going to enter this block of code. There's two ways out of this block of code. Either it adds your score and it finds another copy of your score that's slightly lower and removes it from the table and exits, or it adds your score and then it removes the surplus score from the table and exits. So either time it exits, I need to encode the high scores. So either there or there, I want to encode the high scores. And don't forget, while you're playing this game, so I've, I've already read the high scores before I played the game. But while I'm playing, somebody else on a different computer may have scored a high score and updated the cloud data. So before I update the scores, I just need to read them again so that I know I'm working on the latest cloud data. So read the cloud data, see if I'm in it. If I am, update the cloud data. And that is it. In theory, that should now allow me to read and write the cloud data. Let's give it a go. Oh, no. Let's reset the cloud data. Don't forget, don't do that accidentally after the game has been published for weeks because everybody will lose their scores. Let's run the project. Looking good so far. It's using all the default data. Spacebar to play. I've scored 500. Rock coder, 500. Looking good. I'll try making a higher score. I'm going to play with a lot more skill. I'm going to score 7,623. Great. I'll just test to make sure it's not going to let me have more than five digits in my score. So I've scored one, two, three, four, five, six. It should trim off the one and leave me with two, three, four, five, six. And it hasn't. Actually, I think I think it actually has. But let's let's have a look, shall we? I think it will. The cloud data has gone to five numbers, but the actual data it's showing is six. So let's stop the code and run it again. Yeah, it's loaded from the cloud now. The five digits, and the reason for that is when I'm encoding the score. 
it's encoding it here to make sure it's five. So it's actually only writing five digits to the high to the cloud, but it's not updating the lists until the next time you run the game. So ideally what I want to do, the easiest way around this is after I've written the cloud data, then let's automatically decode it. So I've written all the data, then I can use my functions I've already written to load that cloud data back in and, co and copy it into the lists. So now let's see, r r I will first of all stop the data, stop the program, reset it again, because it doesn't matter at this point, run it, scratch cat's in there, rock code is going to score 500, great, he's in there, and because it's stored in the cloud and loaded back out of the cloud, it's all in capitals now, which is nice, this is how it should be. And also the score is padded out to five characters. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six. So it should trim the one off. And then we go two, three, four, five, six. So this this high score table is now working in the cloud. If I save this project and reload the project and run it, it's still there. If people on other computers play and get their names into the high scores, then that will work too. This high score is there for anybody to play against. So this is a great way to make your games more competitive. Other people will want to beat your high scores. You'll want to beat their high scores and so on. Um, so you can use this, this code in any of your games now. One thing of importance to remember, if you're backpacking code to drag it into another project and you think you'll do that with high scores, which is ideal for this purpose, but there is a bug in Scratch or rather something that's not featured. If you backpack a sprite that uses cloud variables and drag it into another project, it doesn't use cloud variables anymore. You have to recreate a cloud variable. And then you'd have to change this code to make sure this used your new cloud variable. So it would just be set there and here where it loads it. Um, there. Well, that, that, I'm glad I noticed that. That's actually checking in the wrong place. So, what it needs to do is set cloud data should be done first. There's no point in checking if it's zero if I haven't loaded it. So I'll load it first. If it's zero, then I'm not connected. Otherwise I am connected and carry on. Oh, notice a bit of a bug there. But now that is a fully working high score table. I'll imagine I will add another tutorial to this where it shows you how you can extend this to being 50 high scores in a table, which will need to use more than one cloud variable. But for now you can score, you can store eight, maybe nine high scores in a single cloud variable. Use that in any of your projects. Have fun with it. Don't forget, if you've enjoyed this tutorial and want to know when I'm releasing new tutorials, then please subscribe to the Rock Coder YouTube channel. And thanks for following through this tutorial.